Good morning. Whether you're in person or online, we're glad that you're here with us. One of my favorite things about Lewisburg United Methodist Church is the community. I love how everyone is so greeting and kind, and I like when we have little get-togethers like we're doing later today. A couple of announcements. Um, right after church, if you look on the back of your bulletin, we're having a shindig. There'll be all kinds of fun things outside. There's walking tacos. There is cornhole. There is seating in the shade. There's tables set up for you. The playground is open for free play and also a bouncy house. So we hope you'll come. Oh, my golly, and free snow cones. So make sure you come through. Even if you can't stay very long, it's important that we take some time to get to know each other. So it's a walking talk so you can walk it onto your car. So we'd love to have you if you'd, if you'd stay. Um, small groups you'll find in the center of the sanctuary. We have a small group that's going to be for youth group. We have a women's group. We have some co-ed groups. We hope you'll look at the small groups that start next week and would love for you to join in on one of those. And then finally, if you have a, um, there are booklets around that are green booklets. I should have brought one. I don't think I have one. Um, does anybody have a green booklet on them? No? They're in the center of the sanctuary. Bev Ingle's going to wave them for you so you can see them. And they will tell you how to plug in. I do have one. Here it is. I'm supposed to highlight a couple of things that are in this booklet each week. So today's highlight is we need folks that are willing to help with snacks and packs ministry. We feed 200 and some odd children. Um, snacks that are underserved every week and we need a couple delivery drivers that will drive the snacks from here to the school another example is we are in need of greeters that come just a few minutes before church starts and they help wel welcome folks and make everybody feel um, loved and accepted so we hope that you'll sign up for that ministry now grace is going to tell us what our greeting is Let's stand and greet one another by saying our favorite school subject. Let's stand. What's your
worship from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 9. You'll see on the screen a leader and a response. Know that the Lord your God is God, and he is faithful. God keeps his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. the music is played. Good morning, everybody. Can y'all look up here and see me? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm going to tell you about a Bible verse, but I'm not going to tell you how the Bible verse ends. Oh, that's good. I like that smile. We are going to tell you a Bible verse, but you're going to help me with the ending. So this is what the Bible verse says. Jesus is with us. Do you think the Bible verse says when we are at church? It doesn't. Do you think the Bible verse says, Jesus is with us when I am behaving really well? Nope, it doesn't say that. Do you think the Bible verse says, Jesus is always with me? Yes, yes that's what the Bible verse says. It says, Jesus is with me always. That means even at school. How many of you are starting school tomorrow? Raise your hands. How about out there? Anybody starting school out there? Oh, there's a few of those starting out. Okay. Well, I brought some older students to tell you how they know that Jesus is with them while they're at school. So let's hear what Addie has to say. I know Jesus is with me whenever I'm about to take a test and I'm really nervous and I just pray and I know that everything will be okay. I know Jesus is with me when I'm like nervous for a game or nervous with a class and I pray and it makes me feel better about it. So they pray when they're nervous about a test or about to start a game, and they know Jesus is with them. Well, I thought it might be fun to bring you a reminder to put on your backpacks of that Jesus is with you always. So everybody's going to get one of these, a little Jesus to put on your backpack. And then whenever you forget and start feeling nervous or anxious or unsure, you can remember that Jesus is with me always. Let's say a prayer. God, we ask your blessing over these students and their teachers as we re-enter school. We thank you that you love us so much that you go with us wherever we go. You are with us amen. always. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. There he goes. You're right. <laughs> All right, let's collect the noisy offering buckets.
We are so delighted to be joining some families to our church. So we'll wait for everybody to get here. Here come the Jameses. <laughs> you got to collect your people. You got to go collect your people. <laughs> oh my God. And the Russos, you got to collect your people. <laughs> Wherever you want. Right here is great. Y'all got to go at the tail end down there, don't you? And there, there's your mommy. Aren't you delighted when you see fresh faces and fresh hearts that want to be part of this beautiful church family that loves the Lord, but we're still dysfunctional, and they want to be part of us even then. We're going to first ask them, those that are all joining in membership, um, we're going to ask them a couple of questions, and then um, you'll have a response for them in just a moment. Okay, friends, do you all accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and seek to live in his love? I do. Will you love God with your whole heart and soul and mind and strength? I do. Will you love your neighbor as yourself? Will you live a life of generosity and hope through Lewisburg United Methodist Church? Yes. Will you share your presence, your prayers, your gifts, your service, and your witness with Lewisburg United Methodist Church? Congregation, will you say this prayer of affirmation over their hearts? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together. family introduce themselves if you'll just pass the mic well i'm mina botros i live here in lewisburg and i'm happy to be part of this church i am jenna and how everybody going penny and your name nora good good morning we are the donovans i'm ty i'm tyler melissa Addison, Riley. And we are excited to be members of the church. We are the Jameses. Uh, this is my wife, Amanda, our son, Guy, and our daughter, Landry. And my name is Van. We are happy to be here. that we have a couple of baptisms today of children that have met with me and have learned the love and the beauty of God and that when God had his son Jesus come beyond the earth, Jesus was baptized himself. And as you remember in the story, as he was being baptized, the sky literally split open and they got to hear God's voice. And do you remember what God said? He said, this is my son whom I am well pleased. That's what he thinks about you and me too. So this gift of baptism, as you remember, in the Methodist church, we honor that God's grace and his love pours over us. And this symbol of water reminds us that God's grace cannot be contained, that his love pours over each of us, that God has already made up his mind about you even long before you've made up your mind about him. So we're asking that Tyler and Landry and Guy, y'all come down by the baptismal font. Okay. I'm going to baptize each of these children as a beautiful symbol that God loves you and that he pours his love and grace all over you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we met with the children, I told them, water is going to get everywhere. But that's to remind us that that's how God's love works. It cannot be contained. It fits in every part of our lives and in our hearts. Let's say a prayer that's printed over on the screen for these children. We surround this family with love and prayers that they may grow. together all fall. So please stand those who are able for the first reading. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people and call us say, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will pray for you because we've heard your faith in Jesus Christ, and we love you, have all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up in for you in heaven, about which you have already heard the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just at his 
just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You did awesome. I love getting a letter in the mail. Anybody else love still getting letters in the mail? I, I don't get them as much, and I, y'all probably don't send them as much these days, but they are so sweet. Recently, I found an old letter my dad had written me when I was away at summer camp. I, I brought a picture of it. He wrote it on his little saw, his saw, his, I guess it's called a hand saw or a... Um, a table saw, it's the little piece of paper that goes on that saw, and he wrote it in a circle. I love letters. This letter that we're going to study together all fall is a letter written by Paul, and letters in his day were a little different. They weren't just newsy or just for fun. They were really important. In fact, so important that it would, we still talk about it today. People kept letters forever. It would have taken Paul weeks and weeks to write it, and then he had to find someone to send it. Send it. They were something that we would hold on to, that here we are in 2024, and we're still looking at his letter. Letters in that day would start with the author identifying himself, and so Paul did that. He said, I am Paul, an apostle, a teacher of Jesus Christ. Already we haven't even gotten into the letter, and something important stood out for me. Paul is actually writing from jail, but yet he's still professing that he's been called by God to be an apostle or a teacher of Jesus Christ. I think calls in our lives are are that way. Sometimes even though you're called to something, that you've been placed in a certain place for a certain time as this, it can be difficult. It's not always easy. Like Paul, we might even face opposition, but God has placed you in that place. I want you to think about where God has placed you, what he's called you to for this season. Are you a parent or a grandparent? Are you a caregiver? Are you a teacher? Are you a student? Are you in the midst of your career? God has placed you there, and even though you may face difficulties, be reminded that you have been called to this place. Then he talks to the folks about who they are. He simply says, to my faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. I love that. He's calling them faithful, but they had just discovered Christ. This church was brand new. They had not met very much. They were on this new journey to explore their faith. And so these folks that he's writing to were fresh and excited about their relationship with Jesus, but because they didn't know a whole bunch yet, they were easily swayed by other thoughts of that time. He calls them faithful to remind them that even when things may not in your faith be perfect, you can remain faithful. And then he says, your brothers and sisters, he's reminding that we can all find unity in Christ. Look down your pew real quickly. Did you know that those folks who you may or may not know are your brothers and sisters in Christ? The reason we show up in worship is to encourage one another. I know that you can find Christ in your heart wherever you go. Jesus is with you always. But the beauty about being brothers and sisters in Christ is we come together and we link arms and we encourage one another. Then Paul tells us who God is. He says, grace and peace to you from God our Father. You have a Father in heaven who is perfectly loving, and he lives within you. And he offers you grace and peace. In other words, he is your source for grace and peace. So I want you to do a little exercise with me. I want you to close your eyes, place your hand over your heart, and choose one. In this moment... Do you need to be reminded that there is grace pouring over you, that you are deeply loved and forgiven? Whether you're at your best or your worst, you are loved. Or do you need in this moment peace just to simply remind you that this is going to be okay? You can open your eyes. Carry that word with you this week that God gives you as his source as your father. Our whole letter that we're going to be exploring together is going to say, let's be rooted in Christ. 
as your roots deepen in the Lord, as your roots deepen into him, growth organically and automatically happens. I love that. That all we have to do is root in to the fact that there is one Lord who rules over my heart. And as I deepen my um, roots into that, faith, hope, and love organically grow. There is one Lord. Y'all probably know the guy named C.S. Lewis. He is a, a famous theologian and he's also an author. And he asked this question, who is Jesus? Is he a liar? Is he a lunatic or is he Lord? All of us have to answer that. Is he a liar and he's not at all who he said he was? Is he a lunatic? Did he make this all up? And, and, and is he out of his mind or is he Lord over your hearts? In the day of the Colossian church, there were a lot of different philosophies whirling around, all kinds of beliefs. There were gods, there were goddesses. I don't know that it's that different today. There's a lot of things that we can believe in. And so Paul's reminding us that there is one Lord. You know, in the Bible, I'm sure you've heard the word a lot. I have too, called idolatry or worshiping idols. And I think when I hear that word, I think about like a golden calf or a golden statue and people would fall for that and they'd go, oh, I'm going to worship this golden calf. And I think, well, I would never do that. But we still have idols today. See, whatever is most important to you, that is your idol. That is your Lord. Whatever I spend most of my time doing, wherever I seek fulfillment, whatever I think about the most, that has become my Lord. For some of us, it might be making money. It might be having a successful career. It might be having um, the being the best in some certain sport or some sort of activity. I don't know what it is for you, but I do know this. The most common idol is simply me. You and I tend to call ourselves Lord. Our pride and our ego says things like, well, this is what I want, and this is how I'm going to do it, and, and I want it my way. And maybe this morning we need reminded from Paul's letter that there is one Lord, and you ain't it. Can you look at someone and just tell them you ain't it, please? <laughs> and aren't you kind of glad? Aren't you glad that you don't have to be Lord over all? As we begin to deepen our roots into the idea that there is one Lord, three things begin to grow out of your life. Faith, hope, and love. Here's what Paul said in his letter. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven, which you have already heard, it's that same message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing. I love this. The three things that spring up in you, faith, hope, and love, spring because he's in you. That he has chosen you to dwell in. And as you hear of him, he's already within you. And as you root yourself in him, he grows those fruits of love and faith and hope. So let's look at each one of them. Let's look at faith together. I've decided as I've gotten older that faith just simply means let God. Let God. Let God be God. It means that I can then... Take a breath and I can acknowledge that I have human frailties, that you and I are deeply insecure, that we have doubts, that the things of life are uncertain, but I can trust in his power. I can trust in his wisdom. I can trust in his goodness because I've chosen to let God. What is your faith, uh, what does your faith journey look like this morning? I want you to kind of identify where you are. Um, I'm going to use an illustration of a boat, and I chose a picture of a boat that I think Jesus, it looks like one that Jesus would have paddled in. Here's where you're going to be in your faith journey. You're either going to be outside that boat, way back out, open deep waters, and you're paddling the best you can, trying your best to keep your head above water, doing the best you can, chasing after faith. Or maybe you feel like you're clinging, 
to the side of the boat where your legs are dangling in the water. You believe, but you're thinking to yourself, if I let go, if I lose my grip, I will fall to pieces. Everything depends on me. Or our other option is resting in the boat. Being inside, you in the front of the boat, and Jesus in the back of the boat, both of you possibly using your oar, but the one in the back of the boat steers and guides. I learned that the hard way. When I got married to Rudy in my early 20s, we first rented a cute little cottage on a lake, and that's where we lived. So I thought it would be terribly romantic to buy him a red canoe. And I envisioned us every evening paddling together around the lake until the first night when we got in the boat. We both started paddling, but the canoe just kept spinning in a circle, round and round. We never got anywhere. I thought I had bought a terrible broken canoe. Come to find out, you both can't steer. You can't both steer. Somebody has to guide and someone has to paddle. In this scenario, Jesus is your guide. He's the one that sits in the back of the boat. What if faith is simply just acknowledging that? That this life is too heavy for me to carry. There's too much to it. So much of life doesn't even look like I thought it would. And even in the midst when I'm healing and I'm restoring and I'm enjoying my relationship with Christ, it can still look messy. But just stay in the boat and let God be God. I want to hear you say, let God. I'm going to give you some scenarios, some circumstances that maybe you've navigated, maybe you're currently navigating, or maybe will be navigating. And I want you just to respond when I point to you by saying, let God. When you experience difficult circumstances, let God. When there is a change in your life, let God. When you're navigating a broken relationship, let God. When you have this desire or dream buried in your heart, let God. When it's something I cannot fix, let God. And when I feel disappointed, let God. We've talked about faith. I want us to look at the next word, which is hope. I think hope can be described as trusting God's process. Trusting that God is at work even when I don't get it, even when I don't see it. We have this beautiful picture of rooted over here, and I'm going to tell you where I think the words go. I think faith is the branches and the growing fruit. I think hope is much like a tree trunk that holds us steady, that we trust that God is doing the growing even when I'm not so sure, which means that love are the roots. The roots of faith come from love. If you begin to understand how worthy you are in God's sight, when you begin to understand his transforming love and that his transforming love has power to change your life, when you begin rooted in love, the other things happen organically. I think sometimes we get too busy, especially as believers, focusing on performance, focusing on the fruit, focusing on how strong our faith is, behavior modification, do more good works, do more so God will like me. What if we stopped looking at faith that way and begin to start with the roots, roots that the hope, the faith, the fruit, grow organically when rooted from love. We're going to be offering a precious opportunity during our prayer time at the um, end of each service through this study, and it's called anointing with oil. It gives you some information on your bulletin in the bottom corner what it is, but I'm going to share with you what I like to think of it as. You'll receive oil on your forehead in the sign of a cross just as a symbol just as a symbol of God's power, his presence, and his healing grace in your life. Just like the water of baptism, it is not magical. 
but it is a beautiful prayer symbol, a reminder that God's grace pours over you in your circumstance, and his grace is enough. So as Tony sings over our hearts, we'll ask that you come if you'd like to receive the anointing of oil or use a place of prayer at the altar. Maybe you'd like to light a candle at one of our stations. Whatever you feel led to do, respond to God's deep love for you this morning. Jehovah needs thee, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace, and I worship you.
Let us hear the prayers of the people. Prayers for Harold Brewster, who is recovering from surgery. Prayers for Tony Angle. For Mac Michael Delardis, who is having carotid artery surgery. For Christine Chapman, who is having surgery at CAMC for heart issues. For Mary Ann Lovejoy, who experienced a broken hip. For the George Feimster family. For Sean Reed, who is recuperating from a fall. Continued prayers for Harold McMillian and all the unspoken requests here in the sanctuary and online. Oh God, you are our one Lord. We do a terrible job at helping you or trying to assist you or trying to rule our own hearts and lives. So we rededicate our hearts and minds to you this day. We deepen our roots into your presence. We are reminded that as we call out to you as our one Lord, you do the growing. You give us faith. You give us hope. You give us love. So for all these prayer needs said out loud and unspoken, there is enough faith and hope and love for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been a beautiful day. I want to read to you a scripture that Paul wrote in Corinthians that kind of talks about faith, hope, and love. I love what he says. He says, we don't see things clearly. We're all squinting in a fog. We're peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. And there will be three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. Let's stand for our musical benediction. together the book of Colossians. We'll see you downstairs for the shindig. Amen. Hi, I'm Rev. Bev Colombo with Lewisburg United Methodist Church. We are excited to share that we have become a lighthouse congregation in the United Methodist Conference, which simply means that we're going to continue to be a welcoming place. So if your church has currently begun to close or gotten to a place where it will no longer be meeting, you are welcome here. We thank you to those that are continuing to give so that we can offer these vibrant ministries and being a welcoming place to our community. Here's how you can give. You can send a check to P.O. Box 69, 
or bring your donation and offering to Lewisburg United Methodist, or you can give online through our webpage or Facebook. We are so thankful that not only do you give faithfully, but you faithfully welcome all of those outside of our church into this place of love. <laughs>